Hi there, this is Rob from Reason101.net and I'm here to show you another tutorial today. This time I'm going to go through the process of how to make your patches better. Um, this is going to start off uh, quite slow and it's going to use the Thor synthesizer to create some patches and to show you some techniques you can use to um, beef up your patches or some new creative ideas for you uh, when you're designing sounds in Reason. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, I'm going to kind of go through the, the different effects that uh, the level or the amplitude will have on your patches. So the first thing we're going to do is create a Thor and that's automatically going to create a Thor here. It's going to be initialized, so you're going to have basically uh, all the elements that you need. Um, but one thing we're going to do before we get into this, um, we'll just play the initialized patch, and we'll hear how that sounds. Um, now, one of the things that I want to show you first, and I'm going to explore this in, in this tutorial, is the idea of the big meter, and how this um, works with sound development in terms of how you can use it to uh, um, gauge your levels and, and see how far you've gone, if you're clipping, if you're not, and to try to keep all your sounds consistent. So it's really important to go through this conversation. Um, where you have the hardware interface, open that up and you should see the audio input output. Um, now over here you've got a big meter button, so just click on that and your big meter opens up underneath here. Now before you can use the big meter, if you, if you play anything, it's it's not going to show up in the big meter because you have to select from your audio input or output you have to select a channel to monitor and right now I'm only using the audio output and you can see that here and so what you do is you click underneath here and all of a sudden your big meter turns on okay easy enough now the thing you have to realize with the big meter is that you've got a couple of different modes that you can view uh, first off, let's go through the different modes here. The VU is a VU meter, and when you play it, it's showing you everything in VU. The idea is not to go over zero in the VU meter. Okay, and the VU meter is very good because it'll show you um, the levels uh, as close as possible to what humans perceive into the way humans hear. That's the purpose of the VU meter. It's, it's the closest that you'll get to how humans are experiencing the sound. So it's very important in that capacity. And what I find is a sweet spot is getting um, anywhere from minus 8 dBFS to um, approximately minus 4. Somewhere in that range. Sometimes, you know, minus 12 to minus 4. That range over here. You never want to go above 0. If you go above 0, you're clipping. Okay, and if you see the red pop up, you'll see that it clips over here, and you'll also see it clipping past the zero mark. Okay, that's something you definitely don't want to have. So um, once you get these red clipping indicators, you can click reset, and it'll turn those off, and you start over from scratch again. Okay, so in this case, what I would do is keep it around minus four, maybe a little higher. Okay, and you'll see I'm using the master volume to affect the levels and how f how far it goes, just to, just as an example. But generally speaking, the master volume on Thor I use as a last resort after I've actually done the patch, um, because everything inside your patch will affect volume in one way or another. So I usually try to uh, level out all the different volumes. Um, or level out all the volumes of all the different parameters in Thor before I resort to using the master volume. That's just a kind of a trick that I use because you want to get as far back in the audio signal as possible and start from the very beginning and slowly kind of um, use your volumes along the audio route to kind of level everything out. And this, the master volume, is actually the last place within Thor before it goes out of Thor uh, for your volume. So that's the last button I would use to actually um, adjust volumes for a patch. So anyway, so that being said, let's get back to these meters. Um, the VU is a good meter, however it's not going to show you very good transients. Okay, It's not going to be good for drum sounds because it's not very fast. It's, it's kind of a slow metering. It's very good if you're trying to monitor pad sounds or steady sustainable sounds. If you want to go into something a little bit more um, involved, what you want to do is go into either the PPM or the peak. 
PPM is uh, very fast at responding, but it has a slow release. Um, I think it's like 2.8 milliseconds on the release. So it's, it's going to pick up those fast transients very quickly, but it's going to um, bring the meter back down again kind of slowly. If you want something that's the most accurate, especially for transients and for any sound really, you want to use the peak meter. And the peak meter and the PPM meter both pretty much work the same. You'll still see the, the type of um, effect that the meter is having. And for both the PPM and the peak, I say the sweet spot is probably between minus 8 to minus 6 over here. You can go a little higher. You can go up to like minus 4 or so, but I wouldn't really go too much higher than that. If you go too much higher, you are going to clip. And the clipping happens at 0 again. Okay, but zero is at the far end of the peak meter because you're talking about peaks. You don't want to go anything over zero anyway, so that's at the far end of the meter. So once you see your clip signs, you're going to have to reset it again. And um, that's basically PPM and peak. You can also do this dual view, which is the view that I use most of the time, which is the VU plus the peak. And what this does, it gives you both. Um, let me just turn this back down again. It shows you both. Now, on the left side here, all the green that you're seeing is the VU meter. And the VU meter is, um, the legend or the scale for the VU meter is at the top, while the peak meter is on the bottom, the scale is on the bottom, and the peak is only displayed by the two uh, rightmost LED indicators, and they'll be in yellow. You'll see it here. So this is your peak over here at 6. And this is your VU over here. You see how it drops down? Now the reason that drops down is because you've got the peak hold over here. You've got a five second hold, which I would advise to keep it on five seconds. Um, you can keep it on infinite if you want, and then when you play it, it's always going to stay right there until you hit the reset button. Okay? But I don't like the infinite because it doesn't show you, as you're progressing over time, it doesn't really show you the peak very well. I like the five second hold, it constantly updates. Um, so that's really the way that this, this big meter works. Um, the channel knob is the same as if you're selecting your audio inputs and outputs. If you have a lot, you can cycle through them like this with the channel knob. But it's a lot easier just to choose your audio by clicking on it underneath here, that little square. And then you, and then you can monitor things. So the key to keep in mind over here is that you don't want to go above zero on the VU and you don't want to go above zero over here on the peak. So you want to keep it within those sweet spots and any patch that you're creating you want to always kind of monitor it in that big meter. The other thing you want to do is you want to bypass any master insert effects. Like right now I've got some insert effects but they're not being played through because they're bypassed. Always keep that bypass on and always have a direct route coming from Thor to your outputs and that way the big meter is going to give you a very detailed explanation of of what the sound quality is all about or the sound volume. Um, as with any kind of metering system I'm going to say this and this is probably the most important thing make sure that you use your ears to really listen to the levels and try to keep them as constant as possible from one patch to the next when you're creating several patches and use your ears if you're ever in doubt don't look at the meters, turn it off, and use your ears because they're the best arbiter of how well or how leveled your, your volume is. They're the best gauges that you have <laughs> to um, get consistency across your patches and to get the right volume for your patches as well. That being said, when you're creating patches, you want most of your patches to be around the same um, in terms of volume. And the key to keep in mind when you're creating a patch is that everything affects volume. If I turn up the resonance, for example, let's, let's just play through here. If I turn up the resonance, you'll see the volume gets lowered a little bit. Now, if I really crank it up, the volume is going to go way up and it's going to start to clip. Okay, so that's just showing you how the resonance affects the volume. There's other things that affect the volume. There's the... Um, the uh, sustain, there's the decay that affect the volume, there's if you put delay on it or chorus it generally will make the volume a little lower um, so you might have to adjust that and one of the ways that I use to adjust things is the drive parameter which directly affects the volume in a very direct way 
so the drive on any of your filters, um, the gain setting in your amp, um, in your amp area of Thor is going to affect the volume. Uh, your amp envelope is going to affect the volume. All of these parameters, anything you change in your patch is going to affect volume in one way or another. So just constantly keep keep a bead on where your big meter is going. Um, listen with your ears. Make sure that your volumes aren't chaotically um, very high, um, that they don't go too hot. You also don't want them to be too low because then it's not the patch isn't going to sound right. The other thing to keep in mind, um, which is a kind of a, an important point, is you've got this polyphony setting here. If your polyphony setting is set to one, okay, so it's one voice, and you can do it mono retrig. When you play one note, you want to basically have that one note hit those sweet spots that I was telling you about. If your polyphony setting is higher, if it's like, uh, let's say, eight and eight, then what you want to do is play a th either a three key or a four key chord and see if it's hitting that sweet spot. Uh, of course, you have to set it to polyphony. Okay, and you want to make sure that it's hitting that sweet spot. It, make sure it hits the sweet spot, doesn't go over or under. It's um, at about level. So if it's monophonic, you, you're going to be using one key obviously to judge your sound quality or your sound level. If you're using um, polyphony, then you want to use a chord to kind of gauge how high or um, how how much gain or how much volume or amplitude that your patch has. So that's pretty much uh, the basics that I wanted to go over with you in this tutorial here. And uh, I'm going to then, next time I come back and I, I have a couple other videos in line to kind of show you some of the different tricks with patches inside Thor, but I first wanted to give you some of the basics on how volume works in Thor and how the big meter works so that you can go about Every time that you create a patch, you can go about understanding that volume is a very important factor, and you don't want your patches to be chaotic. You don't want to have one patch really low, one patch really high. You want to have them all have a kind of a consistent volume. Um, there are cases where it's very specific. I mean, a drum sound, obviously, you want to have it um, not too high, but you also want to have it pumping. You want to have it, you know, really push through if it's a kick. So that might you might want to boost the volume on that a little bit. You, you, a pad sound, you might want to have it way in the background, or you want to have it very bright, in which case the volume might be a little lower than um, other patches uh, to make up for the brightness of it. So there, there's different tricks that you can do, um, but generally speaking, you want to have all of your basses sounding around the same volume. You want to have um, all your pads sounding around the same volume so that when people use your patches, they're they're going to understand that, okay, this is the volume level that it's set at. It's consistent with most of the factory sound bank patches. It's consistent with most other developers that do refills. Um, and if you're a, a, an aspiring artist that wants to do a refill, you want to make sure that those are in the same level or the same volume as other refill packages and other designers. And this way, this will ensure that it keeps it at that consistent level. So thanks a lot for listening. I'm Rob. You can come visit me at reason101.net, where I will make uh, some more videos available, and I will give you a bit of a walkthrough, a, a Reason 101 guide to creating better patches with Thor. Thanks a lot for watching.